Paolo will start with a presentation of uh, what Oracle is providing to, to Le Roi Malin. We will speak, of course, about Le Roi Malin as a, as a company and about their use case. So when Paolo is finished, I will, um, I will on my side, talk about um, what Shipio is providing, uh, the supply chain visibility that we are um, implementing with um, Le Roi Malin. And then I'll say a few words about Shipio more uh, general, and then we'll, uh, we'll come to conclusions. So Paolo. Can, uh, okay, thank you, Nicola. And as Nicola said, I'm, I'm, this is his presentation. They invited me to to join to give uh, a, a short introduction on the project at Le Roi Merlin, which I happily uh, uh, accept. Now it's not an easy exercise because we have some folks from from ADO Group, which is ADO is uh, the head the head uh, group of of Le Roi Merlin. Uh, which, by the way, I encourage you to talk to them. They are good good customers of of, of ours. Uh, I see uh, Thomas over there, uh, and there is other other colleagues uh, from from uh, Adeo out there. So, Thomas, you you, you will uh, help me keep honest on, on my presentation. Please uh, let me know if I if I'm mistaken. Um, in any case, I'm I'm happy to also uh, to present this because I am a a, a happy customer of Le Roi Merlin. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm the most profitable customer for Le Roi Merlin because I like to do handwork uh, at home but I'm not very good, so what happens is that I go back to the store often to ask for advice and change products. So not, not very profitable for, for Leroy Merlin, but a happy and loyal, loyal customer. So uh, if probably not all of you have come from here from Spain, from Italy, or from uh, France, but if you've been in any of these countries, uh, you, you will see that Leroy Merlin is in the landscape of, this, of these countries. Um, so who is Leroy Merlin? So Leroy Merlin is, pa is a retailer, uh, part of a network of, of retailers on the do-it-yourself and home improvement market for both um, uh, residential and professional uh, uh, people. Um, the network has 800 points of sales, 800 stores. Leroy Merlin, it's about 500 uh, stores. The, the network of Leroy Merlin is about 500 stores. And just to give you a little bit of, of context, um, the, the idea uh, at the initial part of the project was to be able to, to handle inbound and outbound for 11 distribution centers that included national and regional ones, and uh, to manage in, a, in less than 30 minutes a volume of between 75 to 80,000 orders per day, which meant about 1,000 shipments uh, per, per, per day. Okay. So what were the challenges? So uh, in, a, in a nutshell, the challenges were that they were looking to uh, standardize different types of processes that they have, transportation processes. Um, as I said, high volumes of, of uh, uh, orders, as you saw, and they, they had to plan that in, within 30, 30 minutes. Um, different transportation modes, so they have their own fleet, they have contracted fleet, uh, and they also they use three PLs, so they have to manage all, all that, and different billing processes for each one of these of these transportation modes. So that was the the, the, the initial uh, challenge, and as I said, this included inbound, outbound for the three countries. Um, and we will see the different processes, but it was basically from the order taking, order management, all the way to the planning, execution, visibility that we will see with Chipeo, and then back to, uh, to the billing process and the settlement of, of, of the transportation billing. Uh, what were the three main objectives of their project initially? And this was six, seven years ago. So improve uh, the profitability. So basically for transportation, we all know it means reducing, uh, the, minimizing the, the transportation costs uh, mainly. Uh, improve the quality of, of service, so being more reliable, both for the DCs, for the stores, and for their, their own customers. And uh, reduce the CO2 footprint, right? So um, of course, how, are they, how, how did they wanted to achieve that? while optimizing the, the transportation, uh, the transportation planning, uh, and that included the, the truck loading. So we've seen uh, this morning some instances of how truck loading optimization can be done. So this was part of the objective of, of uh, Leroy Merlin. 
Uh, and, and this, what is very important here is what they mean here by taking control of transportation is doing it in steps, meaning that first the, the plan was to fully utilize their own fleet, their contracted fleet, and what remained then used three PLs to, uh, to, to, to uh, make the, the, the transportation. So that's, that's part number one. That, so that's one dimension. The second dimension is to being able to leverage the network. So as I said, they are part of a network of, and there's other sister companies. So how to uh, have synergies among, among this network. So that was important for them. Uh, and so that's the second dimension. And the third dimension is the geographical one. So not only do that for the, for the sister companies, but also within the regions, within the national, and within the European, the, these three countries region. So basically, consolidate all this information to optimize transportation and uh, get more benefits as a, as, a, as a group. And of course, as, as I mentioned, one of the important things was to have uh, the right freight settlement, the right freight set settlement for uh, the different uh, transportation processes. So, in order to, uh, to, you know, to pay the right amounts to the, to the transporters. And of course, an important part as well was the visibility, and, and uh, Nicola will develop on that. So really have visibility into the, 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 and the tracking of the shipments. Okay. So in a nutshell, this is, this is a very typical process, the planning, the execution, and finance. So the planning part taking place in OTM, then part of the, when the execution started, and part of it, send information to Shipeo. Shipeo would give the visibility and, and the tracking of the shipments. Once the shipment is completed, executed, then sent back to OTM to take that information and then to do the, uh, the, 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 the settlement of the invoices of the transportation. Okay? And then, of course, then that goes to the ERP. And this is the same, but in a bit more detail. I'm not going to go into all, all the details, but as you can see here, have the, the orders, the, the orders are being planned. Then, once again, here, first do the planning for their own fleet, and what remains, send it, send it to the carriers for confirmation. Once the confirmation is done, the, the tender is done, <coughs> validate the shipments and send the shipment execution information either to the suppliers or to the warehouses for then to have the planning also of the appointments appointments into the, the warehouses, appointments into the stores, and execute having the tracking events in the, uh, in the transportation, uh, complete the transportation, receive the information that the uh, uh, transportation has been completed, and then do the pre-invoicing or self-invoicing, reconciliation of shipments and invoicing, and then send that for the actual payment of the, of the invoices. All right? And this is my last, last part. Uh, in terms of the OTM implementation project, the three main things to highlight. The idea was to do uh, short uh, rollout stages. So they started with, with France. And the idea is that each stage was going to get shorter, uh, learning from the, previous, uh, from the previous stage. So it, it, it make it uh, faster and faster. So that's one thing. The other is to make uh, Le Merlin more autonomous. So at the beginning, there was a heavy involvement of Oracle Consulting. And then in the, in the later stages, the idea was to uh, give more, um, I would say, involvement of Le Merlin teams and less involvement of Oracle Consulting. So gradually give the autonomy to uh, Le Merlin for the, for the following stages. And flexible rollouts that take into account the priorities of each country, because France might have different priorities than, than Spain or than Italy. So give them some leeway to do uh, their own, their own uh, priorities. So basically, that's, that's the context. That's the context of the, the whole project. So then I hand it over to, to Nicola. Thank you, Paolo. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, uh, it's interesting, because Laurent Merlin is an example of a customer that um, deployed uh, in a very comprehensive way the, uh, the Oracle um, uh, suite 
and uh, was able to, uh, to really uh, think a lot about how to optimize uh, this tool. And uh, they, they came to us specifically for exactly what we are here for, that is the, the visibility. There was good uh, interaction uh, between us, of course, and the customer, but I would say a three-party dialogue with, with Oracle to, to understand exactly what was relevant and how we could implement it. And to start with, um, I propose to show you a, a video, and this is where it is. Swap est un portail de prise de rendez-vous pour gérer les réceptions fournisseurs en magasin et en entrepôt. C'est une solution digitale, moderne, simple et ergonomique, type Doctolib. Avant Swap, la prise de rendez-vous se faisait quasiment tout le temps par mail, de temps en temps par fax et un tout petit peu par téléphone. Le processus est simple. Les commandes sont intégrées dans la plateforme. Pour pouvoir prendre rendez-vous et livrer le magasin ou l'entrepôt, trois options sont possibles. Soit le fournisseur prend directement rendez-vous sur l'outil en sélectionnant les commandes et en se positionnant sur un créneau disponible ou qui lui est pré-réservé. Soit le fournisseur délègue la prise de rendez-vous à son transporteur qui devra suivre le même processus. Enfin, le transporteur peut s'affecter les commandes dans l'application et prendre le rendez-vous en toute autonomie. Et donc, vous l'aurez bien compris, hein, l'utilisation de l'outil est un incontournable et tous les anciens canaux, le fax, le mail, le téléphone, seront supprimés dès lors que la solution Swap est posée en magasin ou en entrepôt. Au niveau de la prise en main, ça a été très très rapide pour les équipes, avec un minimum de formation, en quelques minutes ils étaient autonomes. L'ergonomie de Swap, le nouveau logiciel qu'on a actuellement, est fluide. Quelques améliorations doivent être faites dessus pour faciliter la visu du, du logiciel, mais en soi c'est un gain de temps phénoménal pour les équipes de réception. On peut citer quatre enjeux majeurs liés à l'utilisation de la solution. Donc premièrement, c'est tout ce qui tourne autour de l'amélioration de l'efficience en réception via l'automatisation des prises de rendez-vous, avec le suivi des taux de saturation des plannings de réception magasin, avec le fait de suivre aussi toutes les étapes de la réception, avec la potentialité de créer des litiges et également de pousser les protocoles de sécurité en automatique aux fournisseurs et aux transporteurs. L'avantage de cette solution pour le magasin, plus particulièrement pour la réception, ça sera une rapidité d'exécution avec une facilité de prise de rendez-vous. Et pour le Ramallah, ça serait une meilleure image de marque concernant euh, sa disponibilité des produits et sa satisfaction client. Le second concerne l'amélioration de la promesse client, qui est un enjeu majeur chez le Roi Merlin, avec un suivi à la maille commande qui va pouvoir permettre une animation beaucoup plus fine de notre respect de la promesse. Swap va m'aider à améliorer ma qualité de service par plusieurs aspects, notamment dans la fiabilisation de mes transports, vérifier les horaires de livraison et si la livraison a bien été effectuée en temps et en heure, et aussi pour vérifier l'adéquation du portefeuille commande du magasin avec le nôtre en cas d'annulation ou de modification de commande. Le troisième est le renforcement de notre partenariat avec nos fournisseurs via une gestion simplifiée de la QSF avec des datas qui sont fiables partagés et qui permettent de mettre en place des plans d'action communs sur l'amélioration de la QSF. Le dernier, vous l'aurez compris, c'est la constitution d'une base de données extraordinaire. Pour les futurs utilisateurs de la solution, je leur conseille en cas de doute ou de problème de contacter le support partenaire. Ils vous répondent de manière rapide, simple et efficace. Swap devient finalement la solution incontournable pour l'ensemble des réceptions à destination des magasins puis des entrepôts par nos transporteurs et ou nos fournisseurs, avec bien sûr plusieurs objectifs, gain de temps pour tous, fiabilité de la data et mise en place de plans d'action orientés sur l'amélioration de la promesse. This video is interesting and um, it's like in a, good, in a good novel, we'll do a little bit of flashback. This was the end result. Now we'd like to go back to the, to the beginning when we engaged with uh, Leroy Merlin about uh, four years ago. Uh, as I said, Leroy Merlin was already a very educated uh, <coughs> company in terms of um, innovation, in terms of digitalization of their uh, supply chain. And um, They, they, had, they had various initiatives, for instance, one initiative was to develop um, e-commerce. So that was, the, the idea was to uh, not only rely on the stores, but offer also delivery to the end customer, if necessary, for uh, particular uh, bulky uh, orders. Um, so all these things were running through their minds, and they were also very concerned about quality, everyday quality, and in particular, customer satisfaction and uh, punctuality. 
And uh, they, they said we measure the quality every day, and yet we see that the customers, the, the stores, complain about lack of punctuality. So they, they deep dive a little bit into that and uh, realize that their uh, KPIs for punctuality were not reliable. So they thought everything was okay, but the customers had a, had a different uh, view. And that was the beginning of a discussion, and uh, we entered into, uh, you know, what is exactly the use case and how can we, um, can we help you. Um, if I summarize the challenges that we had, uh, as I said, no, no visibility on, uh, or no reliable visibility on the punctuality to stores, low satisfaction from the, uh, from the store logistics teams, uh, no synchronization also between inbound and outbound, so, uh, you know, materials were not arriving on time for a delivery that was, uh, that was blocked by lack of uh, material and uh, lack of uh, good KPIs to, um, to, to move on. And a lot of teams, I think that's where also uh, it was hurting, they had teams dedicated to solving these problems, but uh, spending the money on the, on the team and <coughs> not, uh, not getting the results that they were, um, that they were um, uh, trying to, to achieve. Um, so we, we provided a combination of uh, three things we, you, that you've seen through this uh, movie. One is a slot booking uh, solution. Another one is a full access to our platform. And I'll come back later on on uh, the, the features that we offer with this platform. And the third one was the mobile application that we also um, offer to um, the, the customers to help um, Scanning, scanning their deliveries. Um, so we we agreed on the, we agreed on the solution on the scope of the solution as as we, exactly as Oracle uh, they did not start with a full scope but uh, with a few uh, stores and then um, expanded. Le Roi Merlin is uh, the most famous brand for do-it-yourself stores, but uh, there are also two other uh, brands which are. Um, Zodio and uh, Well Done, which are also added to the, to the scope. So uh, as of today, it is no longer 170 stores. I think it's almost uh, 270 stores that are uh, in, the, in the scope. Uh, two, more than 200 carriers, as Paolo explained, uh, they have their own fleet, but they also work with uh, 3PLs and um, uh, with many um, outside carriers. And what could be uh, measured, at least at the end of the first phase of the deployment, is an increase of 20% um, of the punctuality on store deliveries. It is huge, 20% of the punctuality, it's a, it's a very significant progress. Uh, a 25% decrease of um, inbound calls from, uh, from stores. And um, a solution that is um, not um, you know, purchase, but actually not activated. It's really a solution that has been uh, consistently deployed and used by uh, by various teams on the docks, in the stores, to reduce the dwell time. And it's also uh, one of the benefits of uh, a good visibility. It's also to to make uh, to, to to have a common base to agree on what uh, happened in the past, and therefore to resolve litigations uh, in a much more uh, in a, in a very neutral and uh, more efficient way. So, um, uh, the decrease of expenditures and number of litigation. Um, we talked about uh, integration with Oracle. There were other systems <coughs> to integrate with, uh, in particular the, uh, the whole system for uh, ticketing, which is provided by, uh, by TDI. And, um, as I said, Laura Merlin is one of the uh, users of our uh, mobile applications. It's not used to its full extent. It's not used to, uh, to provide tracking because tracking is already provided by the uh, platform. It's really used to, um, to, to create an, an event on delivery. So as soon as the, as the, as the goods are picked up or delivered, uh, an event is created and the event is uh, feeding into the platform. And uh, that is the status now. There is, of course, a roadmap with, um, with, with other potential uh, features. Um, and unless you have a question right now on, on Laura Merlin, we can go back uh, to it. I would like to give you a little bit more background about um, 
what we do at Shipeo uh, generally, because it's also applicable, of course, to, uh, to lower data. Um, we, we, we talked, and I, I saw in a, in a previous presentation by Forkites a similar statement. Uh, what is exactly visibility? It's a, it's a topic that uh, keeps on changing. Everybody has its own uh, definition. What I can tell you from uh, Shipeo's perspective is uh, we're still a young company. We started uh, nine years ago. And at the beginning, we were not even talking about visibility, or when we were talking about visibility, we meant actually tracking, because that's the, uh, that's the, the first layer, really. It's to identify where the, the, the tracks and the shipments are. And it's, of course, very important. But uh, as you go into, really, uh, discussions with customers, uh, into find, we'll give you the information, but what are you going to do with it? This is where it becomes very interesting, because it's, uh, um, the visibility is actually a contribution to a larger, uh, larger topic, which is uh, to, uh, to, to contribute or to help building supply chains which are resilient and which are customer-centric. So it's, um, it, it, it gives us a very wide um, uh, scene to really uh, deploy visibility in a, in a smart way. Um, we, are, we have a platform, Shipeo is a platform, and we do essentially three jobs. And the platform is structured um, on these three jobs. The lower layer is um, what we call the global and multi-modal network. So it's both a piece of software, a, a, a middleware that connects to various types of source, and it's the network itself. Because once you have connected to uh, Oracle, and once you have connected to other um, ERPs or TMS, and once you have connected to WMS, and once you have connected to uh, telematics devices and um, other kinds of um, sources such as EIUT, GPS, etc. Once you have onboarded the customers, the customers are already there, and if you deploy another project tomorrow, you just um, benefit from these existing interfaces. So we have. Uh, the, the first focus we had is to build that platform, which is very robust, which is scalable and uh, operates worldwide. I think we have uh, something like 95 or 100 countries now where we track uh, flows. It is uh, the last generation platform using APIs, using also <coughs> connections every once in a while. And we make that information available. We clean it, we make sure it's uh, data of good quality. But you might argue, uh, as long as we do that, we are just passing information which is uh, available somewhere to, um, to the customer. It's already a good, a good value, but it's uh, not adding really new data. So the new data comes uh, from the uh, data intelligence, and this is where also um, we spend a lot of time and effort keeping on trying to, uh, to improve our algorithms. These are proprietary uh, intelligence, the most um, the most um, uh, obvious one is uh, ETA, and we are proud of that ETA because it's, uh, it's, it's recognized as, uh, as a very effective one to the point that we commit uh, when we uh, conclude a, a, a sales agreement with our um, customers, we, we, we commit on the level of um, accuracy of the ETA. And um, we have an ETA for the road, now we have an ETA for the um, Ocean as well. These are very different uh, flows of information and um, a, a lot of work that, uh, that that remains within Shido and is made available really as an output to the to the customer. And then the third layer is um, is contribute to the um, automation of uh, processes. So um, the idea is not just to. to collect uh, data and uh, to enrich this data, but to really help the customer make sense out of that and put that in the context of a decision-making tool. A decision-making tool that is also shared with uh, the stakeholders, so the Leroy Merlin and all our other customers can decide which information will be provided to their carriers or to their logistics service provider, in which, uh, in which way, either direct access to the platform or notifications by emails, by SMS, uh, or through other ways. And um, this is what is really going to, um, tomorrow, to take uh, more and more importance. It's to, we, we take for granted that we can provide the data, we take for granted that the ETA is fulfilling its, uh, its role, 
and uh, where we're going to have more innovation now is um, on, on what do we do with this. And what do we do with this is uh, what we are trying to, to, to show on that uh, slide. Uh, visibility in and of itself is, is nothing. It's really, um, it's really in the back of the stage and it's serving uh, solution or topics which are much wider. So uh, you see some of the examples there, supply chain planning, control tower, uh, control tower and digital twin. We have uh, today our uh, largest customers is the, uh, is the automotive company, Renault. Together, Renault has built a control tower. This control tower is powered by, um, by Shipail and it's uh, using the benefit also of a digital twin built with Google. And so this cooperation, Renault, Google, Shipeo, is, um, is, is very interesting to observe. It's already deployed, it's already used, and I'm sure that uh, if I speak to you in two or three years of time, I'll be able to, uh, to show you something much more powerful than uh, what they've already built. Um, it's also about transport execution, it's about uh, freight audits um, and pay, so everything that relates to, uh, to the uh, invoicing and to the control and the reduction of cost. Warehouse and slot management, so some of that was um, relevant for, um, for Norwa Merlin. Customer portals, uh, customer relationship management, supplier relationship management. Uh, we become a brick into those uh, systems that uh, to be quite frank, three, four years ago, we, uh, we were not um, uh, aware of. And uh, now, of course, carbon footprint management, we also have our contribution to that. We calculate today um, the um, emissions related to all the shipments that we, uh, that we make uh, visible. And um, it, it's already in production that uh, we are launching it. Uh, I think the official release will be uh, in two weeks of time. Uh, but it's already been uh, tested by, uh, by a few um, customers, um, including Lovandana, actually. Um, just coming back quickly to, uh, to the way the, the, the platform is structured, if you think of the lowest uh, layer that I showed before, we, um, we connect uh, to the various sources that you see here, uh, ERP, Shippers TMS, WMS, carrier TMS, and only that is actually already um, a, a secondary, very positive aspect of uh, using Shipeo's platform. It, uh, it, it avoids bilateral relationships between <coughs> the shipper and, uh, and their carriers. And actually we meet many shippers or many other software vendors that, had, that were doing this job already in, uh, to, to a certain extent that when it becomes very very massive, when you have to onboard not just uh, three or four carriers, but uh, literally hundreds of uh, carriers like, uh, like Renault, you need a third party that uh, will do that. So we are able today to actually uh, convey transport orders issued by the shipper to, uh, to the carrier, even though that transport order uh, is, is meant to go from the shipper directly to the carrier they prefer to, uh, to let it transit to our platform because our platform is excellent in exactly doing that, um, connecting and uh, forwarding information. Uh, we, we connect to, um, to telematics uh, vendors in, uh, in, a very, um, in a very systematic manner. We don't wait for, uh, for a request from a particular customer. We do that in a proactive way. And uh, this is also recent. We connect more and more now with uh, data lake control towers, so uh, systems that already do more or less what we do. And we are trying to be very pragmatic. If there is already a, a tool that um, connects and has the information that we want, we're not going to redo the work. We're going to, 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 to feed directly on that uh, platform. Um, this slide. Um, is, is a different way to illustrate that. And what I uh, want to highlight here is that uh, we're talking usually about real-time visibility. So people think uh, in, the, in the present with very little latency. Something happens and one minute, five minutes, maximum 10 minutes later, I should be able to have it on my screen. Yes, this is real-time. But the platform is also about uh, future through the uh, predictive uh, ETA. And it's also a lot about uh, the past. 
So we record all the transactions, we document them, they are here, they are not destroyed, and they can be used for, uh, for insights and analytics. And uh, this is what uh, Laurent Merlin was uh, referring to when they said we, uh, we improve our uh, litigations, we improve uh, the, the punctuality, they are able to look back at what happened the previous months or the previous periods, they can benchmark their, uh, their carriers, they can benchmark their sites, they can see that there are particular dwell times on a particular site. Why is it so? So they deep dive into that problem. And um, they issue also quality newsletters to, uh, to their carriers. Um, so again, the Ramana is very uh, quality conscious. And um, they, they, they created these KPIs uh, in, uh, in particular with the data provided by the platform. Um, when we, when we engage with a customer and when we engage with, with partners such as Oracle, we are uh, trying to spend more and more time before we, before we uh, try to sell something to the customer. We're trying to spend more and more time discussing the, um, the pain points to be, to, to, to be really sure that we are doing something uh, meaningful and that uh, once we agree on a, on a transaction, the whole company will be behind us with a very concrete uh, uh, purpose in mind. Usually, uh, the, the beginning of the conversation is always, oh, uh, my supply chain is uh, in danger, I, my customers are not satisfied, my, uh, my employees are not satisfied, we spend too much time for trivial uh, operations, uh, or we have um, resilience uh, issues uh, with all the disruptions that we had in the last uh, three years. Of course, the supply chains were very uh, disrupted uh, and uh, more sustainability issues. And that, that is a general uh, topic. Then when you deep dive into uh, you know, what is exactly your business and uh, where, uh, where does it hurt, usually we, we manage to put it in, in, in one of these categories. It's either related to the customer satisfaction, so um, uh, providing the right information to the, to the customer, making a promise to the customer, and uh, keeping that promise. Um, avoid the dispute and penalties due to uh, missing information. It's, it's absolutely uh, it's a very unpleasant situation if uh, you know, uh, the, the, the shipper says, uh, I was not delivered on time, and, uh, and the carrier says uh, something different. So now we have a, a clear reference. Uh, productivity of the um, service teams. So if you can do with a team of five what uh, you used to do with a team of 10, you've saved uh, a, a lot of uh, money. Uh, put uh, the same amount of uh, <coughs> staff, maybe, but at the right place, in the right uh, warehouse, according to uh, what you anticipate in terms of uh, deliveries and uh, bottlenecks. Increase the staff productivity in, in stores for the for retail, it's of course uh, essential. Uh, digitalized uh, transport processes. Um, so um, as, I said, uh, as I said before, it could be just the fact of uh, minimizing the, the flow of information. Just rely on, um, on, on GPO to um, to provide the right information um, at the right moment. It's the not building yourself um, interfaces. Uh, it's, it's, it's one effort is to build an interface, but uh, especially when it comes to telematics and collecting GPS positions, etc., uh, they, they, you, you, you get a lot of issues. Uh, somebody changes a, a password somewhere or uh, installs a new device, and then uh, you don't receive information uh, anymore. So we have tools that uh, track permanently, test permanently all our connections. It's extremely massive in terms of data. And that enables to, uh, to, to be proactive and to, to make sure that the data is, uh, is reliable. Uh, other topics uh, reduce the, uh, the cost. So we're talking of uh, dwell time fees at loading and delivery uh, uh, sites. We're talking of demerage fees, in um, detention fees in the um, harbors. We're talking also of avoiding uh, the need for urgent uh, last minute shipments by air because a factory, uh, typically an automotive factory, doesn't have uh, one component, so you need to suddenly uh, ship it by air and it costs a fortune. Uh, optimize the cash flow by uh, optimizing the, the, the stock itself. Um, reduce the risk of um, 
goods uh, lost or delivered to the wrong place. So uh, if you think of the mobile application that I mentioned before, one of the benefits is uh, you can take picture also. So if something is missing, if something is broken, uh, the information will be uploaded um, on the platform. Accelerate invoicing to your customers. Uh, that's something that um, may, may, may sound a bit theoretical, but it's actually a very, uh, very crucial topic for the, for the CFO. Um, improve supply chain uh, planning, so this is where we can make uh, nice uh, connections and interfaces with uh, supply chain uh, demand uh, tools. There are many new, new tools in this, uh, in this segment. Benchmark your carriers, uh, put pressure on them, uh, manage their quality, select the ones that have the, the, the best performances, and, um, and minimize uh, CO2 emissions. Um, again, it's uh, it's a new product for us, it's a new market, um, but it's, uh, th there is definitely a trend not only of, uh, of saying, uh, yes, we are, we are concerned by emissions, but actually acting on that and to act on your emissions and your, um, and, and your, um, yes, your, your uh, sustainability, you need uh, to have uh, data. And the, the reason why Shipio is relevant for emission. It's not because we are suddenly become experts in, uh, in sustainability and uh, computation of uh, emissions. It's because we simply have the data. And until now, um, some of the carriers were able to tell their uh, customers, "Yeah, I can give you, um, I can give you my own calculation of uh, carbon emissions for the, for the expeditions." And it was probably uh, relevant or in, in good face. Uh, a decent calculation, but every carrier would have um, a different way of um, calculation, so you could not compare them. We have all the data, so we can provide a homogeneous uh, computation. It may not be perfect also, but it's, uh, it's, it's following the latest uh, standards, so we cooperate with a company that is uh, certified and um, does it with uh, either the real value or when they need to estimate the values, uh, they, they, they pick up the right ones. And therefore, uh, at, at first, you get, uh, you get a consistent picture of your emissions, and uh, then if you start comparing them over time, you know which ones are uh, increasing or, or decreasing. Um, these are, um, this is a selection of our um, Customers, we um, for, uh, for for obvious reasons actually for uh, the reasons that I mentioned before we uh, we have a lot of customers in uh, in the retail um, industry. We also have a lot of customers in uh, manufacturing, whether it is uh, consumer goods or uh, heavy industry. Uh, we work with four uh, PL and logistics providers. Uh, construction and building materials is also a, a, a good vertical for us. Automotive, I mentioned Renault, and uh, there, there are uh, other ones that we'll announce uh, soon. This is not uh, this is not exhaustive. <coughs> these, these are definitely what we uh, where we have um, the most success. And uh, you see 4PL and logistics providers. So when they uh, subscribe to our platform, it is for their needs. In, uh, in, in a large way, that is, uh, they make that information av available also to their own customers. So actually, the number of users of uh, Shipio's platform, we have uh, we have something like 140 or 50 customers, but the number of companies that use the platform is, is, is much bigger because each of those have uh, dozens of, um, of customers. Um, yes, so, Conclusion and next step, uh, coming back to, um, to Le Roi Merlin, uh, you remember the name of uh, the project that, uh, that the person was uh, describing in, uh, in the video, it is called uh, SWAPT, and the main benefits uh, can be classified in, in, in four topics, the efficiency of um, the reception, uh, so you can say this is employee satisfaction, um, meeting the delivery commitments, customer satisfaction, uh, transparent cooperation with, uh, with the stakeholders, carrier satisfaction, and um, what uh, the, the, the manager, Nicolas David, said at the very end, uh, it's a reliable database 
for analytical purposes. So they already make use of that, and uh, you can just imagine that uh, all over time, uh, this is going to be uh, a source for uh, other, other type of analytics. Um, for us, Laura Merlin is, um, I would say, the ideal <coughs> uh, we have, um, we, we really have, a, we really enjoy the relationship we, has, uh, we have with Laura Merlin. It's a dynamic customer, it's a demanding customer, so they've always uh, put pressure, positive pressure on us to, uh, to, to, to make things uh, work. Uh, pragmatic, flexible, uh, they don't uh, buy something just to, uh, to, to tick, uh, to, 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 to mark a field. Uh, if they buy a, a tool, it's really to implement it and to use it, and uh, when they use it, uh, it, doesn't need, it doesn't mean they need to, to use every single feature, but uh, those are not really uh, relevant for us. They have uh, frequently new new organization, new challenges, new requests. And um, exactly, so we have a, we have a good, uh, we enjoy our uh, dialogue with uh, the with uh, I think together with Oracle, we have uh, demonstrated that uh, our solutions also are flexible and uh, the integration we have is, uh, is efficient. And um, there are a uh, potential uh, roadmap which are still open and uh, some of it is also confidential so I'm not going to, to expand on that but uh, basically we have a solution that um, is deployed in our case uh, mostly in, uh, in, in France and um, we will uh, progressively add other geographies we will uh, hopefully add uh, carbon visibilities and uh, there are other topics also which are, uh, which are under discussion um, and I think this is my last uh, slide, so um, I don't know if we have a lot of time, but certainly if you have a few questions, I can uh, take them now or Paolo. Thank you.